Hi, this is Zoo, and today we're working on homework number 18. This was a worksheet that you received in class and also available for printing on Edmodo. This worksheet focuses on distributed property. When we do problems eight, 1 through 8, it is important that instead of using PEMDAS, we're not using PEMDAS, we're actually going to use the distributed property to solve these questions. When we are using the distributed property, we always distribute or we share or pass out the number on the outside of the parentheses. So let's go ahead and actually let's look at number four. We did several of them in class together, but let's look at number four. Outside of the parentheses, there is a, um, both are actually in parentheses. So which one are we referring to? We're referring to the number that's alone, okay, which is the negative two. So we're going to distribute that twice to the numbers that are in the parentheses. So when we're distributing, we want to use multiplication. So we're going to multiply 12 with negative 2, which gives us negative 24. And we're going to multiply 13 with negative 2. And we're going to get negative 26. Remember that if you want to use the triangle of doom, the triangle of doom tells us that there's a positive in the top of the corner two negatives in the bottom, and if I have a negative and a negative a number and I multiply, I cover the negatives, and my answer will be a positive. So when I multiply 13 with negative 2, I covered a positive and a negative, which gives us a negative 26 as our answer. So then I'm going to simply subtract. Now I am subtracting already with a negative number, so essentially I am going to add the 2, which is going to give me 50, and I'm going to have a negative symbol that I'm using because I've lost 24 and I keep losing 26, so I've lost a total of 650. In number eight, we're going to similarly distribute. Take the negative one, which is on the outside of the parentheses, and I'm going to distribute that with everything inside. So the first arrow I'm drawing is negative one times 18, which gives me negative 18. Then I'm going to multiply negative one with negative 11. Now that minus sign is the same as a negative, and so rather than just leaving it there, I could just bring it down, but I'm just going to um, go ahead and attach that negative minus sign to the 11. So I'm going to do negative 11 times negative 1, and when I do that multiplication, I'm going to get positive 11. Um, if you don't choose to do the negative, then what you'll still get instead is you'll have negative 18 minus a negative 11. Essentially, a minus minus is the same as a positive. Again, you can use this triangle of doom to help you if you forget how to multiply your positive and negative integers. And you are going to get negative and negative. Cover that up giving you a positive answer, and so that's why a plus is the same as two negatives. So my final answer here is going to be negative seven. This is number eight. Now, in nine through 16, we're still going to use the distributive property, but this time we're going to use, um, see some variables in our parentheses. So starting from the first uh, problem, we're gonna actually skip to number 11. That is a typo, so we're just going to get rid of that uh, backslash there. The number I want to distribute, I want to highlight that. It's going to be the number in the parentheses or the number by itself. So here, the negative 3, it's by itself in the parentheses. So I'm going to distribute negative 3 to V. So I'm going to do negative 3 times V. That's simply going to give me negative 3V. And of course, you can just kind of do mental math. Then we're going to do negative 3 times 5. So negative 3 times 5. A negative times a positive. In my triangle of doom, I'm going to cover up negative and positive, giving me a negative 15 as my answer. So I cannot possibly subtract these two terms. One is a constant with a number that has no variable next, it, next to it. And the negative 3 has a variable v, so I can't subtract them. So then I'm just going to box my answer, and that's all I can do to simplify this expression. Let's try number 12. The number that I want to distribute will be the number in 
outside the parentheses. That's our 4. I'm going to distribute the 4 to the negative 2. So I'm going to say the negative 2 is a negative. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Then I'm going to distribute 4 with the W. 4 times the W is 4W. And that's my answer, but except that I do need a symbol here, either as a negative or a positive, a minus or a addition. And because 4 times W is a positive, I'll just go ahead and put a positive. Now, if you had chose to write the 4W in the front, then your 4W would still be a positive with the negative 8 behind it, which is really simply just 4W minus 8. And you'll see that these two are the same equivalent answers. So whether you choose to write 4W in the front or in behind the negative 8, it doesn't matter. We did 17 and 18 in class together already, so we're going to skip on to the back of the worksheet. The back of the worksheet, let's start with number 1. As we use the distributive property, it's kind of an easier way for us to add numbers or subtract them uh, after we do some multiplication. So go ahead and read number one to yourself. Pause here. All right, we are looking to find the total cost of the tickets, but we do want to justify with a distributed property. Now we could simply just take 575 and multiply it with Marika and her three friends, which means that Marika and her three friends will total four people. So we could simply multiply 575 with four and definitely get our answer. That's a good way to check when we're done. But when we're looking for the answer, we do want to use the distributive property. So that means we can take the four friends and multiply that with the cost of the tickets, which are 575. We can divide the cost of it into $5 plus 75 cents, 0.75 would mean 75 cents. And when I actually go to multiply that and distribute, then I would be distributing four times five, which is 20. Then I would distribute four with the 75 cents, which gives me $3, let me think, one, two, three, four, 75, Yes, $3, giving me $3. So together that would cost $23. Now, that would be how much their total cost of tickets would be. And as you can see, we justify it by using the distributive property. Let's try number two. In number two, let's try it in a couple different ways to set it up using distributive property. Please pause here to read the question yourself. All right, so we have um, how much is it going to cost for the mill on, in five days? And we're gonna justify using the distributive property. The milk cost, we are buying milk every day for five days. So we're gonna do five times, and then the cost of the milk. The cost of the milk is 90 cents. Now that's pretty close to a dollar, so why don't we round it up to a dollar? So we'll say one dollar, but we are um, rounding it up so we do have to subtract an extra 10 cents from the dollar to have our cost equaling 90 cents, like that. This is really nice actually because when we do actually do a mental math, we could multiply five with one to get $5, and five with 10 cents, and then subtract 50 cents from it, which is really easy to do in our head, because we know that that's $4.50 for the cost of her milk. That's even easier than if you did choose to set up your problem not using subtraction, you might have written five and in parentheses uh, 45 cents plus 45 cents. But notice how 45 is much harder to multiply with five versus a dollar times five or 10 cents times five is so much easier. Some of us might have done 5 times 40 cents plus 50 cents and split it up into uh, 50 cents and 40 cents. That could be a lot 
a little bit easier as well because that would be two dollars plus two fifty giving us four fifty so as you can see there are several ways for us to justify using distributed property but all of our answers will end up to be four dollars and fifty cents total for that milk I'm going to do number four, and that's going to be the last problem I'm going to do for this video, and you can definitely try the rest by yourself. It's pretty simple. Pause to read number four. In number four, the problem just splits it up for us into two parts, where the first part we're writing the expression. Just like we did in number two, these would be three different expressions for this problem. And in number one, we wrote one expression here, four times five plus 75 cents. So we're just going to be write an expression. Now, the number of friends that are going is Coleman and his two friends. So there's a total of three friends, and each of them are going to buy one ticket, one hot dog, one fry, and one candy bar. So that they're each going to have a 7 plus 350 plus 225 plus 150. So that's going to be our expression because if I added all those up, multiplied it by 3, then I would be able to find out how much they are paying total. So then in B you're going to actually solve that question. When you solve it you'll get an answer that I'm not going to tell you what we'll go over it in class tomorrow. So don't forget you have a quiz coming up and study hard. See you tomorrow.